in Belize, I thought we were very accepted. There were um, a couple of things that happened that really helped with that. The women of Belize deliver at home, uh, either with their mother or a sister or some other woman in the village, or they come to the hospital, and uh, the hospital was really lacking in you know, resources, but there was, a, there was a mindset that it was safer to deliver at the hospital. That may or may not have actually been true because of you know, so little resources they had, but a, a woman had lost two babies, stillborn, two little boys, and so with her third pregnancy, she didn't want to deliver at home. So she planned through her pregnancy. She was coming to the hospital. And fortunately, she fell. She went into labor on a day the bus ran, because the bus only runs every third day from these outlying villages into town. I'm not sure what their plan would have been had she gone into labor a different day. But came into town, had her baby. Everything went wonderful. It was a little boy. He was great. But they discharged her the next morning. And so now this family is stranded in town. It's going to be two more days before the bus takes them home. And their, their choices were walk 20 miles back to the village. This is a woman that just delivered yesterday. They do walk everywhere, but you know maybe not one day after delivery. Uh, they could have slept on the street because they had no money for a room. There are, uh, no, they're not motels like we think of in the United States, but there are there are places to stay. They, they call them motels. So you can rent a room if you have money, but these people have no money. It's a cashless society, the, the, the Mayans uh, that live in the, those remote villages. So his third choice was to come ask us. He knew um, someone at the hospital had told him, well, they've got a truck. They might take you. And he came to my clinic. He was so sweet. His name was Imitario. And he told me a story and asked if we could give them a ride home, and we were more than happy to. And, uh, it gave us a chance to see the village and, uh, and also get to know them a little bit, but I tell you what, and it wasn't planned that way, but Imitario just turned out to be my greatest fan, and he was really instrumental in getting the men to accept me. You know? uh, I mean, right after that, the men started showing up in droves. Now, often the men would come first, and they'd talk to me, sort of you know, check me out, and then they'd come back with their wife the second time. But um, a lot of the women didn't speak English, uh, so they would have to come with their husband or a friend that did speak English. But there was definitely that sort of, um, what would you call that, interviewing process that went on, you know, that I had to pass. But Imitari was, was instrumental in getting it started, getting the men and, and convincing the men that, you know, yeah, these people are okay. They're, they're not going to hurt us.